to win them to the ground. Go and find them, there to bring them, win the lost that any cause. Go out and win, rescue from sin. Days almost gone, slow sings the soul, souls are crying, men are dying, when the lost are turning cost. As we look around us, all the fields are white, waiting for the harvest of the Ripen souls of men. Christians must get busy. There is work to do. There's an urgent task awaiting you. Souls are crying. Men are dying. Won't you win them to the Go out and win, rescue from sin. Days almost gone, slow sings the soul. Souls are crying, men are dying. With the lost that Many souls are drowning, dying fast away, sinking into darkness with a heavy load of sin. Jesus Christ is waiting, calling for his own, rushing to the world without delay. Won't you win them to the ground? Go and find them, there to bring them. Win the lost attack. Imelda! Imelda, where are you going? I told you I am going to the cross. Now listen to me, Imelda. I am your husband. And as your husband, I am the one to lead you to the way you would follow to eternity. No, my husband. I am your wife. I will always remember that you are my husband, the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. I will honor you. I will never remain obedient to you. But the journey to eternity is an individual decision to choose the way to follow. And I have chosen the way of the cross. Will you disobey me again? You dare not, Imelda. I am telling you that this insubordination will not continue. This is how you told me you saw a light. And eventually the light leads to a church. I called you and said, come out. We have great possession. They will discourage us. They will persuade us to drop all that we've acquired. You didn't listen. You went ahead. Now it's the cross. You want to go deeper. But I'm saying no. If you dare and disobey me this day, I will spell the word husband for you and I will teach you the meaning of it. You said you are a follower of him. Is it the Bible that says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Is it not what your Bible says? That is exactly what the Bible said. And if you would be sincere, you would know that I have fulfilled all righteousness as a wife to her husband. Except that I've chosen the way of the cross. I demand total obedience and total submission from you, Imelda. No, my husband. What you are asking from me is the part that belongs to God, my soul. My soul belongs to God. And I have chosen the part that will guarantee my soul a safe journey. Then, this marriage will not continue. Be prepared to marry another husband when we get to grace. Because you will not come into my house. Souls are crying. 
Men are dying. Won't you win them to the cross? Go and find them. There to bring them. Win the lost at any As we look around us, all the fields are white, waiting for the harvest of the ripened souls of men. Christians must get busy, there is work to do. There's an urgent task awaiting you. So Won't you Stop. win them Stop. to I said, the Put me down! Put me down! Put me down! What is the matter, Your Excellency? They're passing the way. The way to the narrow gate Jesus spoke about. No, Your Excellency. That gate is too narrow for you now. We have lifted you up and made you a governor. Your name and everything you are carried to eternity are bigger than the narrow gate. You can no longer pass through here, Your Excellency. Also, there is a checking post on that route. If you will go through it, you have to lose everything you have gathered, including your wives and your concubines. Besides, all the people going to turn it through this route will have to go to the cross before coming to Greece. A very long and stressful journey. But our route here is shorter. There will be no stop and search. Our vehicles will carry you an entire load to eternity. No, we shall pass through this route. I have faith. And with faith, we shall all pass through. No. Your Excellency, if you will no longer put your trust on us, we will no longer go with you anymore. Neither will these my people, whom I have called to bear you on their shoulder. We will also dethrone you as a governor. Yes, it is an order. And no majority of through this route will be allowed to rule in this present world unless he agrees with us. So, the choice is yours. Then, so be it. You, take this load from him. Agrega, allow him to cut the load. Follow me. He will look for us later. Let's go. All of you, follow me. Follow me. Souls are crying. Men are dying. Won't you win them to the cross? Attention, please. We would like all pilgrims intending to travel with salvation shuttles to eternity to pay attention. What I want to say now is of great importance to your journey. This is the journey of your life. Your welfare and safety is our concern. You have been on a long journey, bearing the weight of your load, because there is no other means of coming from the dark world to mercy except by foot. And since then, you have been groping in the dark, looking for the way to eternity with eternal life. This is mercy, a transit country to eternity. This is the place where God said, Come and let us listen together. And the place where Jesus began to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. From here, you'll be going on to the next transit country to eternity. The cross. The cross is a place to crucify the flesh and self-will. A place to die for the world and its worldliness. A place to be crucified with Christ. A place of sanctification. From here, You'll be moving on to the last transit country to eternity, the grace. The grace is a country of total freedom and choice. Great sins abound in grace. It is the last bus stop to eternity and the last place that God will plead for man for reconciliation. From grace, it is eternity. Everyone in grace will be standing at the door to eternity. But how many steps you will take to slip into eternity, I do not know. As you enter grace, you'll be told more on how you'll be living the victorious and overcoming life. This is the checking point for every traveler seeking eternal life. Every load will be weighed on the scale. And if your load is heavy, you will have to drop it at the foot of the cross. Here is the foot of the cross. Here is the straight narrow gate. The gate which rejects every load of sin. 
As you come to the cross, you must submit yourself to the sovereign knife in the hand of God to cut the false king off your heart. But the question is, when you come face to face with the razor sharp sovereign knife in the hand of God to cut the false king off your heart, will you still come to Jesus? When the knife falls on the false king of your heart with the pain so excruciating, will you still come to Jesus? When the sovereign knife in the hand of God touches on the precious things that you so cherish and hit carefully in the deep of your heart, will you still come to Jesus? When the spirit of truth rebukes and chastises you and points at those things that will hinder your journey, will you still come to Jesus? Let no man deceive you. The journey to the cross is a serious and focused one. It has no place for frivolity, jesting or joking. The journey to the cross is a journey with suffering, tears, blood and death. Jesus once went to the cross, leaving an example for you to follow. The cross did not spare him. It slewed him. Many who believed in his death and resurrection were stoned. They were sown asunder. They were tempted and slain with the sword. Many who believed in his death and resurrection strived and persevered in sheepskins and goatskin, been destitutes, afflicted and tormented. They were tortured and did not accept deliverance that they might accept a better resurrection. Others faced cruel trials of mocking and scourging of bonds and imprisonment. The journey to the cross accepts reproaches, radicals, and shame. You will have to suffer in the lifelong battle against sin by crucifying your sinful desires. You will suffer in the war against Satan and the powers of darkness as you advance to the kingdom of God. You will experience both hostilities of the adversary with his demonic host and persecution that comes for standing in the ways of the first prophet who distorted the gospel. The journey to the cross is a journey to be enlisted into the army of the Lord to fight in the fierce battle ranging in grace. And the Bible said, many therefore of his disciples who had had this said, this is hard saying. Who can hear it? And from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. The angel with his scale is waiting for you. Would you go away sorrowful if the scale rejects your load? If your load cannot pass through the straight narrow gate and the only option is to drop it at the foot of the cross, would you still go away? Would you abandon the project to eternal life because you're not willing to put Christ before and above all possessions, just like the rich young ruler because he had great possessions? Would you still go away? Jesus said, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. And again, Jesus said, Remember Lot's wife. If the scale rejects my apparel, I am for Jesus. If the scale rejects my load, I am for Jesus. Coming to Jesus is coming out of your evil ways and wickedness. Coming to Jesus is coming out of your occultism and idolatry. Coming to Jesus is coming out of your stealing and robbery. Coming to Jesus is coming out of your fornication and adultery. Coming to Jesus is coming out of your filthy apparel, your lies, your hypocrisy, your uncleanness, your bribery, your immorality, your backslidness. Come, come and join me and ride in this luxurious journey to Christ. Now, you, sir, go and look for my friends. Tell them I am sorry. Tell them to come back. I am not willing to go with them. Please go. Okay, sir. Tell them I'm waiting. Yes, sir. The day is drawing nearer, time is running out. The prophets have declared it when the Lord our God shall come. It is time for service, oh, it's in our eyes. 
tell the world that love is coming soon. Do you have to go to eternity? Yes, we carry every soul to eternity. Do you accept every load to eternity? Yes, we carry every load, no matter the weight. We carry it for you. Do you also go to eternity through the cross? No, we don't go through the cross. It's a stressful and a far journey. But you need not to worry. Whether you go through the cross or not, everybody is coming into grace. Grace is the last bus stop to eternity. It is where every soul will drop. And from there you walk into eternity. Why we don't encourage pilgrims to go to the cross is because of the humiliations, the reproach, and the sufferings it brings to the people. Besides, a modern cross is not standing in grace, and that is where the souls journey with us go to. This modern cross will not slow men, neither place any condition before the traveler. It is a cross that will not reject your load. The joy and the gift the world offers to you, it allows you to continue this journey even the way you are. Once you are saved, you are forever saved. So, with my entire load, will I still see Jesus? All you need is faith to see Jesus. Follow me. Let me show you great men of God and gospel preachers who are now on this same journey with us. And even this man here is a pastor. Beloved, what this brother has told you is true. I am a pastor. By the travel guide I received when we entered into mercy, my next transit country should be the cross. But when I met this brother, he told me of the new cross. This is a great liberty. Now the journey has been made easy for us, rather than going to suffer through the hills and valleys of the old cross. Now when I drop my load, I am coming back to fetch my flocks that went through the narrow way. So come, let me carry your load for you. I guess you're a harlot. No! I'm not a harlot. I'm a pastor's wife. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a harlot. I, I thought you are because you dressed like me. No! See! I'm not a harlot. I'm a Christian. I have a Bible too. This is why I'm confused on this journey. Here everyone is going to eternity with everything they brought from the dark world. The same way they came. If I continue this journey the way I come, will I say Jesus? This is my confusion. You worry too much, my sister. This journey is a journey of faith. If you have faith, you will surely see Jesus. You mean faith without words? That's the problem I have. Self-will. I used to worry like you, my sister. But since we were suffered that the new cross will not reject my sexual appearance, my appearance does not bother me anymore. Once you are saved, you are forever saved, my sister. Souls are crying, men are dying. Won't you win them to the cross? Go and find them, there to bring them. Win the lost at any cost. Attention, please. My beloved brethren, if you are going to eternity and your loads are heavy, there is nothing to worry about. There is now a new modern cross standing in grace. The old cross has been modernized. The new modern cross will not slay you. It will not reject any of your loads. Neither will it reject the apparel the world has given to you. It is a cross that will not place any condition before you. It is a cross that guarantees you eternal security. Once you are saved, you are forever saved. It is a cross that bears no reproach, no shame or radical. You will not deny yourselves anymore. It is a cross that gives you the liberty to everything the world offers. It is a modern cross. Wherever you are, if you can hear my voice, start coming. I will lead you to the new cross. Start coming. The cross that will not slay you, it will accept you the way you are. Start coming. Don't delay. We are waiting for you. Mari broga ya bababa. Senderi broga gagaga. Start coming. Start coming. Start coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mari broga neri ba ya baba. Lady Brosa Dasa Katarino Yababa. Hallelujah. Stop coming. Stop coming. 
Come along, don't delay, don't delay. Hallelujah, we are waiting. Come on, come on. Welcome to Grace. This is Grace. You can call here the end of the long suffering of God, the end of the long patience and endurance of God. This is the place where the grace of God overflows, the place where the grace of God terminates. This is a place of total freedom and choice. This is the place where life and death are set before every man. This is the place where God pleads with tears to man, saying, choose life. This is the place to reconcile with God. This is the place where God will plead with every man for reconciliation. This is the place for the trials of your faith. This is the place to keep or lose that which you do not merit but possess the promise of eternal life. This is grace. The last bus stop to eternity. Every man living in the grace of God is standing at the last bus stop to eternity. From this grace, eternity is a walking distance. It is so near. This is the place where false teachers and prophets work so strong and some professing believers accept new revelations even though it conflicts with the revealed word of God. This is the place where opposition to biblical truth within churches escalates and those who preach distorted gospel are gaining strategic leadership positions in denominations and in theological schools enabling them to deceive and mislead many within the church. This is the place where their fruits will taunt and mock you as you declare and manifest fruits of the Holy Spirit. But hold fast to that which you received till the end. This is the place where you will witness an unbelievable increase in immorality shamelessness, rebellion against God, throwing off of moral restraint. Here are the last days that Jesus spoke about. The place where the very elect will escape only by his grace. Your enemy is aware that you have arrived and his army are lying in wait for you. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You are a soldier commissioned for war. Here is the battlefield. The war is to earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saint. Go in the mighty power of the Lord. Go not without a service to meet with the Lord. Go not to greet the Lord without a soul. Go not to meet with the Lord empty-handed. Go.
are you persecuting me, Pew? Do you still call this persecution? You've seen nothing yet. This is just a sign what shall come upon a disobedient woman to a woman who has gone her own way. A woman who is on a journey with her husband and suddenly she went in another way. Never agreed with her husband, yet wants to keep him as husband. Do you call this marriage? No. You have dissolved our marriage and you should allow me to remarry. I will marry a woman who will obey me and will follow me to wherever I go. Thank God for you. You don't have anything in this house that can still keep you here except the bag. And that bag is now in the fire. So nothing should keep you here. But if you will not leave, I will buy my feast right on your face. Obey your husband and I will make it very bold where everyone would read. And that which you call persecution today may entirely consume you. God, I have heard you, Pew. But you may not know I have great possessions in this house. What do you have in this house? What do you still have? I have you, Pew. You are my husband, whom I vow to love in sickness and in health. And I love you, Pew. You know it. As your wife, you own me. My entire body belongs to you. And no part has refused to obey you since you married me. I went to the cross to seek to be more virtuous and faithful to you as my husband and to God whom my soul is returning to. My journey delayed because the lost vessel delayed at mess. It took seven days to get a full load for the lost vessel. People refused to come into salvation bus. They were murmuring and complaining that the cost was too high. I did not go to the cross to pass through. I tarried at the cross also for the lost surgery. And to receive the armor, the weapons of warfare for the rest of my journey, which you said you set ablaze. You did not set it ablaze. What you set on fire was a mere symbol, a shadow of what I have brought from the cross. It is not physical, but we can see it. It is a great possession. I am the storehouse, and I carry them to wherever I go. I have lost nothing. Now let us go back and take a closer look at this monster that wants to tear us apart and ask ourselves if we should really allow it to succeed. When you married me, you were into drugs. You introduced me to the business and guided me on how to carry it across borders. I was doing it very well. We never quarreled. When we went into fraud, 419, I was your wife and partner, your best partner. I disguised and told every lie you gave to me. When you went into occultism, I followed you. I agreed with you because I shared the same view that we needed diabolical powers to protect our lives and resources. When you discovered money in government houses, you called me, I obeyed you. And to get a bill, we laundered money for governors and their wives. Then I looked beyond where we were and I saw a light, the light of salvation. I saw that we were in darkness, living in bondage. We have got wealth, great possessions, yes, but we are not saved. Our names are not in the book of life. We have been judged. I read our judgment and saw that we have been condemned. Our names were recorded in the books of death. Our names were boldly written. I saw all that testified against us, all the works we did, every sin, every transgression, every salvation word that we have heard and rejected were written down with the names of the preachers, the time they preached to us, the seconds, the minutes, the hours, the location and places where we have heard these words were written down. Even the words we heard in the buses and on the streets were all written down. Every failure and neglected opportunities that we have got to repent were written down. Deeds long forgotten. Via things we have carefully hidden from the eyes of the people were all glaring at me. And I was awfully terrified. Then I looked further into my own records. I saw all my lies. Even the ones I did not regard were very bold. All my unrighteous feelings and imaginations were written down. Every idle word that I had spoken, my gossips, my backbiting, all the people I have slandered, their names were there. Every foolish and unedifying word that I had spoken, my corrupt and graceless words, my defamatory and abusive words, and all my jestings were written down. I saw my nudity. My unclean 
mess with all the skimpy things I wore in the name of fashion. I saw all those who looked up to me as a role model. So great were the number of people whom I have led astray. I saw all the men who stumbled while ugly at my nakedness. Then I saw all the things I did in secret. My whispering, my drunkenness, all the bribes that I had given and received. My immorality with all the pornographic films I had watched and the lewd magazines I have read. I saw my abortions, my fornications and adulteries and I trembled. I cried out to God with a loud voice. I am guilty, Lord. And with fear and trembling, I turned to the advocate, the mediator, Lord Jesus, to redeem me, begging him for forgiveness. And I came to you, Bill. I told you everything. I did my restitution to you. And yet, you did not believe me and you make jest of me. Now you want me out of your life because I said I would sin no more, because I've resisted the devil and yet I would not resist evil. Abundant grace is here. I would not fit. I will continue to bear the cross which God allows for the trial of my faith. And I will continue to be your faithful wife to the rest of my journey. Sooner or later, the journey will be over and I will be comforted. But I am still saying, my husband, let us reconcile with God now. Let us answer this call of salvation. Let us hear this mediator, this Jesus, who is pleading with us to come, warning us day and night to flee from the judgment day of God. The day every sinner, the young and the old, will drink from the cup of the wrath of God. The day the heavens and the earth shall flee from the presence of God. The day the sea will roar in fear, vomiting all it has swallowed. Death and hell shall tremble, releasing all they have heard. The day every sinner will come to reckon it. The day when nothing else would matter but one thought and one inquiry. Is my name written there? Please, my husband, flee now and escape from this damnation that is coming upon every sinner. We are living in grace. But must we continue in sin that grace may abound? Who knows? The next step might be into eternity. Eternity is so near, my husband. Eternity is so near. So Won't you win them to the cross? Go and find them, there to bring them with the lost at any cost. Yeah! Come on, come on. I'm so glad you're here, I'm so happy to be here. Wow! You guys have achieved a lot. In short, you are the reason for this achievement. Uh -huh. Oh, the judge. Sorry. Why? My father said I shouldn't do it again. Please take it. Let me get something for you to drink. I'm so glad you're here, judge. And where is Gray? He drove out 30 minutes ago. Please call him. There is a deal. I've discovered money in the presidency. Okay, call him. My dear. You have a visitor in the house. Yes, it is George. He's here to see you. Okay, okay. Please let me get something. Bill! I'm in your house now, live. I've come with a deal. In short, I have discovered money in the presidency. Okay. okay. You're welcome. Okay. Please All right. Okay. Remember. Okay. Listen. I am counting on you in this deal. You are my hope. I know your capabilities because we've done this before. This business is in billions of dollars. And if this business succeeds, we might not suffer until eternity comes. George, I am sorry. My father will not allow me to do such a deal anymore. Your father again? Who is this your father and how did he come into our business? You may know him. 
and I listen to him. Please, Imelda, don't bring this born again story in because I know that's where you're going. Don't tell me they have caught you. I brought this business here because of you, Imelda. There's no other person who could handle it the way you would. Please. George, I am glad we are meeting again. I'm glad too. The last time it was drugs that brought us together. When you, Brenny, and my husband were caught by anti-narcotic agency. Hmm. A nightmare I can never forget. The three of you were condemned and driven into a secret execution ground. Where you were asked to jump into a mass grave alongside with others. The three of you were in that grave until a call came from the commandant of that squad. And because of that timely call, you were called out to return to the vehicle. Right there before your own eyes, the rest of the people were shot dead and buried in the grave. Only the three of you were brought back to the cell. God saved your lives. No, you know that you saved our lives. In fact, it was your connection that saved us. No, George, you are getting it wrong. It was God that saved you. He used me, even though I was an accomplice in the crime. This is mercy. This is God's love. I am surprised. You still didn't appreciate God for his love and mercy that has kept you alive till today. I did. I did. Amen. So why do you want to tempt God again? Or do you just want to know if he will still be able to save you again? The Bible says, at the times of this ignorance, God went at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. George, I have found Jesus, the Savior, and he has delivered me. I don't do deals anymore. And I am saying to you, George, don't do it again. Once, you jumped into a mass grave, lie down to die and be buried therein. You lost all hope and resigned to death. When you were still living in sin, you found grace and mercy of God, and you were pulled out of the grave to live again. Would you despise this grace? Church, we are living in grace, the last bus stop to eternity. Don't do the deal, it is evil. The Bible says, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange of his own soul? Church, stop, watch, walk with eternity in view. Don't do the deal, it is evil. The Bible says in the book of Job, chapter 20, verse 5, that the triumphing of the wicked is short and the joy of the hypocrites, but for a moment. Though His Excellency mounts up to the heavens, and His head reaches unto the clouds, yet shall He perish forever like His own dog. And they which have seen Him shall say, Where is He, George? Stop! Please stop this now! Please stop! Please stop! Stop this bear! You will not dare! Let her die! Let her die! Emelda! Emelda! I think I don't care! I just don't care! Let her die! Emelda! I don't care! I don't care! Let her die! Let her die! Get out! Let her die! This jewel, you can't find another. If you cast out this jewel, you will weep until death. How I wish I have a wife who would tell me to come out of crime. 
A wife will assure me that out of time she will be contented with me. That in riches and in poverty she will still be with me. It's a true saying that some people do not appreciate what they have until they lose it. And you're one of them, Bill. The devil in your house today was the woman that saved your life five years ago. When you, Brenny, and I were laying in the mass grave. Only three of us were pulled out from the grave. And before your own eyes, Bill, the other criminals were shot and the grave covered. Where is Brenny today? He was shot dead in South Africa because of same drug offense. Thank God I came, Bill. I have heard, and I will not wait for God to call me a fool. Goodbye, Bill. Get out! Many souls are drowning, dying fast away, sinking into darkness with a heavy load of sin. Jesus Christ is waiting, calling for his own, rushing to the world without delay. Souls are crying. Men are dying, won't you win them to the cross? Go and find them, there to bring them, win the lost at any cost. Go out and win, rescue from sin. Days are almost gone, slow sings the soul, souls are crying, men are dying, with the lost that Who is that? Oh, Ghana, madam. Don't open that gate! You hear me? Don't open that gate! Okay, sir. Don't start this. Allow your wife to go into the house. It's over between us. Can't you hear? I think you should leave us alone. Now! George, please help me get my bag. No! If you don't want me to hurt you, don't tempt me beyond this point. Go away! It's over between us. To a sister's house, I want to rest. Out! Bill, you will surely wait for this day. Get out! Souls are crying, men are dying. Won't you win them to the Go out and win, rescue from sin, days almost gone, slow sings the soul, souls are crying, men are dying, with the lost at What happened? Is my husband. Has it gotten to this point? That was how I saw it. Good afternoon, Auntie. Good afternoon. Come, let's go in. Uh, please, Sister Mada, um, I won't be going into the house with you. I have a burning desire in my heart. What burning desire? I've been praying since yesterday, confessing my sins to God. I want to restore to those I've slandered and lied to. To those I've defrauded, I've seen my sins in murder. Oh, thank God for this great decision. But I must let you know that the day God rejoiced over Job's righteousness was the day his trials began. The heaven is rejoicing over your salvation. But the devil is also coming to try and test your faith. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 21 verse 7, he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I shall be his God, and he shall be my son. 
to restore to people what you have stolen or plundered is evidence of genuine salvation. Even to make peace with the people you have slandered is the will of God for you. Go. I will back you up with prayers. Thank you. Won't you win them to the cross? Go and find them, then to bring them to the lost that any God. You are welcome. You are highly welcome. Thank you for your timely coming. I sent for you because my husband has gone mad. For two weeks now, he has been behaving strangely. He came back home worried and sorrowful. What is it, my husband? He told me a doom day is coming, a day of the wrath of God that no man should wait to see. Why are you talking like this, my husband? He broke into tears. He said he cannot wait to drink the cup of indignation from the Lord. He wants to escape from this very judgment. How shall we escape? I asked him. He said we must all go to the cross, that it is a place of safety. Now under this agreement, he said the first step to the journey is restitution. He will restore to every man all he had stolen and defrauded. The things he had misappropriated and the trust he had betrayed, he will confess. The people he slandered and brought miseries to their lives, he will see again. I said, no, this is a shameful thing to do. You will bring shame and miseries to our families and our relatives. He did not hear his wife. He went ahead and made his restitutions. Today, his bank account is red. All costly ornaments, clothing, arrays, both in pound, euro and dollar. He had cast at the foot of the cross. All honors and merits awarded to him. He had also cast at the foot of the cross. He said they are not fit for the kingdom race. But I said, no, none of mine will I drop at the foot of the cross. He will lose everything today for this journey. How do we face tomorrow? Then I said to my husband that if this journey is so straight and difficult, I will not go. Let me remain in Egypt. You are quite on time. I want you to question him, talk to him, beg him. He must not embark on this journey. As we talk now, he is packing for the journey. Go and call him. Thank you, sir. What is troubling you, son, that you should sorrow and weep? Where are you going? What kind of journey will make a man store off his great possessions and cast away his costly arrays and ornaments? Even your bank account is now red? Your wife has alerted us, and we have come to see if it is true. Is it true, son? It's true, uncle. My heart is troubled. My heart is troubled because I am still in this state of sin. I am sorrowful and weeping because the day of the Lord is so near and my family are not saved. I'm afraid we won't be able to drink the cup of the wrath of God which is coming. It's a doomsday, uncle. A day of fear and indignation. A day mercy and grace will melt away. I want to escape from this great judgment. I told my wife that I want to escape from this estate of sin. But she's not willing to run with me. She's afraid we might not be able to make it again in life without a sin. But I must run. With or without my wife. I must escape from this estate of sin. The things I cast at the foot of the cross. With my wife is crying. Telling people about are distractions for my journey. Close and ornaments not fit for the kingdom grace, uncle. Is it true that you cast away the honors and tattoos we bestowed on you in this estate? The Bible says, no man that worried entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. I appreciate all the honors and titles you bestowed on me while my heart was here with you. But now, they are heavy and distractions for my journey. I have dropped all at the foot of the cross, uncle. You are being stupid, George. Yes. All these babblings are with the imaginations of your own mind. People have been living in this estate from generation to generation. I will be hearing all these tales by moonlight from generations. We are in support of your wife. And we're also saying, don't go on this journey. But if you will insist and go, if you die on the journey, 
none of us will attend your funeral and you'll be buried like a commoner. My Lord Jesus was buried so. The Sahendrins were not at his burial. The Sadducees and the Pharisees were not there. I am going to the cross to share with his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Uncle, I wish all of you here can be as I am now. How I wish you can experience the joy and peace of mind I'm experiencing now, Uncle. How I wish you can experience it. You are mad, George. Something is wrong with you. I want to believe something has gone out of you. We are going. You will look for us. Let's go. It's your sense. And you don't look. You will regret this. Welcome. Thank you for coming around. You're welcome. You're highly welcome. Oh, thank you, thank you for your coming you? around. Thank you. Welcome. It's fine. Please exercise a little patience. Thank you. So this is true, George. You cannot even greet us in the manner of our club. George, we have heard and we have come because we are concerned. Don't go on this journey. People who have made to this journey, only few return back to this estate after realizing their foolishness. Yeah. Don't be foolish, George. You have invested so much in this estate and in our club. And we will not watch you throw that to the air. Remember your entitlements. The 50 million naira reward to your family after your death. Gosh. But let me quickly warn you. If you go on this journey and do not come back to us, your family will definitely lose the 50 million naira reward after your death. <laughs> I can assure you that. Think of it. Think. George. We are your friends. No, that's right. right. We appreciate what your club members are telling you. Stay here with your wife. We are here also. That's right. If truly your bank account is red as your wife told us, don't worry. We will support you financially. Why not? That is why we are here for you. After all, what are friends for? When I surveyed the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, <laughs> my richest gain I have come but lost. All the ventings that charm me most I have sacrificed to his blood. I have forsaken the club and forfeit every <laughs> entitlement due to me. Mm. Anything that will still keep me in this estate is sinking sand. It is not from God. You are my friends. I'm earnestly pleading with you to leave this estate. God will surely and utterly destroy this estate and everyone that dwells in it. George. Leave. <laughs> Souls are crying, men are dying. Won't you win them to the cross? Go and find them, there to bring them. Win the lost at any cost. Go out and win, rescue from sin. Days almost gone, slow sings the soul. So stop crying, men are dying. 
Yes, may I help you? So we've brought you good news. Yes, what is good in the news? It's God's word we've come to share with you, sir. Please, my problem is more than this you've come to share with me. Please, allow me have my peace. Excuse me, sir. Please don't go yet. Let us in. Let's share these problems together. And by the time we are through, it will no longer be there, sir. Please. Come in. this great body. This God you've come to preach, is he a partial God? God forbid. God is not a man and cannot be partial. So, why does he choose to answer prayers of some people and turn his back at others? Do you think the Lord has turned his back on you? Yes, he has. I know he has forsaken me, but he has not told me what I did. Where people go to and return with joy, when I go, I will return with tears. The business other people go into and prosper, when I venture into it, I declare losses. I cannot budget even as other people make budgets. Even when I manage and get some money, if the money did not finish, I know that will not come. Has God not forsaken me? God has not forsaken you, sir. What kind of business are you into? I'm into smuggling. Sir, it is written in Isaiah chapter 59. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, neither his ears heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquity have separated between you and God, and your sin has hid his face from you that he will not hear. God frowned at every hardness of the heart. The choice of your business has brought enmity between you and God. But many believers are also into Smuggling business. And God is blessing them. Sir, it is written in Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 32. God spoke to Ezekiel concerning such Christians. And he said, And they come unto thee as thy people cometh, and sit before thee as my people. And they hear thy word, but will not do them. But with thy mouth showeth much love, and thy heart goeth after conventiousness. Sir, True Christians are Christ-like. Mm. They are obedient to God and obedient to the law of the country. In Romans chapter 13, God commanded Christians to obey the government, to submit to authority. But only when the state requires something contrary to the will of God, then will Christians obey God rather than humans. Smuggling business is against the will of God and is against the government. It is born out of total disobedience to the law of the country. You're like the so-called Christian who went to China and requested from the manufacturers to produce substandard quality of products for more gain and lie to the consumers they of the same quality. Some import drugs. Rather than the drugs to cure, it kills. He may be praised as a successful businessman, yes. But the choice of his business has brought enmity between him and his God, and his name plotted away from the book of life. In the book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 32, he says, For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. So many Christians today has wandered away, out from the way to eternal life. Like Demas, they have gone astray, preferring this present life. I was buying and selling at Balogu Market. But when I saw how people were making it in the smuggling business, I sold off my stock and went into smuggling. At first, I thought I was making it. But I later realized I was laboring for the customs. Despite all the bribes I had given to the customs, they seized my goods over 20 times. The last seizure was my knockout. I could not gather from anywhere to continue. Then 
I went to the village to campaign for a friend that was contesting for the House of Reps. I staked my life to protect his roots. It was a miracle I'm alive to tell the story today. It was also a miracle I'm alive and not in the prison. And my friend won the election. After the election, on the promises of my friend, I went to Abuja. I spent two good weeks without seeing my friend. And his phone kept telling me he is not available. When he returned home, it was only with great opportunity that my friend allowed me to see him. And he made more promises to me. This is two years he has been sworn in. I mean, two good years. His phone is still telling me he is not available. Last year, I sold the only house. The house I built when I was buying and selling and put the proceeds into supply business till this day. The government ministry I made supply to had not paid me my money. I've washed every table in that ministry. I've greased every palm in that ministry. Yet, they've not given me my money back. This is why I say God has forsaken me. No, sir. God has not forsaken you. You had a humble beginning and were dependable on God, which is the will of God for you. Until you began to look at other people and felt that God is no longer doing enough for you. The psalmist had nearly made your kind of mistake. In Psalm 73 verse 2, he says, But as for me, my feet were almost gone, and my steps were near slept. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. He said in verse 12, Behold, these are the ungodly, who prosper in the world and increases in riches. And in verse 17 he said, Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. If you will sincerely look inward and will recognize your mistakes, and will make a U-turn and come to Jesus this moment, we shall pray for you. And the Lord will go before you to the government ministry which you made your supply. And your money shall be released unto you because it is yours. Only you do not return back to your old ungodly association. And the permissive will to do those things which Christ has died and shed his blood for your redemption. If the Lord will have mercy on me and touch the government ministry, and they will pay me back all my money. I promise God I will serve him all the days of my life. And I will pay one tenth of the money to God. Let us pray. Thoughts are crying, men are dying. Won't you win them to the crown? Bro, Michael. Was it not the man we praised? Collins! Who are you looking for? Ah, the man is dead. He went to his town to contest election and they killed him. It was his people that deceived him. The man has been jobless and suffering for years now. No help. Everybody ran away. Just a month ago, God remembered him. The government that owned him called him and they paid him all the money they owed him. His people and those that forgot him had it and they came. For three days they parted in this house. Eventually they deceived him to go for election and they killed him. We came here at that time and preached Jesus to him. We've just come to follow him up. Follow up? Yeah, follow up is too late. So I find them there to bring them. Win the lost at any Pro judge, the follow-up is too late. Eternity is so near. Let's go. From sea. Days almost gone. Slow sings the soul. Souls are crying.
not? Why not? <laughs> if you are willing, then just follow me. Sure. <laughs> yes, Let me bring yes. my bag. All right, all right. It's okay. Brother, please, you can have this. Is it true? Please, you can have this. I beg that this will come off my face. Why can't you just my Insta for me? They hear me. Can't you come off my face? See me see what I I beg start bottom with the go. Many souls are drowning, dying fast away. Sinking into darkness with a heavy load of sin. Jesus Christ is waiting, calling for his own. Rushing to the world without delay. Souls are crying, men are dying. Won't you win them to the following Jesus as you are doing today until I lost my father. My father died in my first year in the university. The whole responsibility of my education and that of my younger ones were so great on my mother's shoulder. None of my uncles and cousins showed consent. The Christian faith I raised became so tough and hard on me. The whole consolation dangling before me. We are coming from the people who we are not on the race. The people who asked me to come and have rest. So I stopped and dropped my button and followed them. After my university, to get a job was another hell. My mother felt so sick. The whole responsibility of my mother's illness and that of my younger ones fell on me. I had no choice rather than to continue for what I was doing in this school. Selling my body in the street at night, at night clothes and beer parlors. I knew what I was doing was not the will of God for me. But it was because the hardship was so hard and much on me. I had no one to turn to. So I lost every patience waiting for God. My sister. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remained no more sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful looking for, of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversary. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sorrow punishment suppose he shall he be thought worthy who had trodden on the foot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and had done despite unto the Spirit of grace. My dear, you did not run well, 
One who is in a race does not look back to see those that cheers him. Dropping from the race is dropping to condemnation, to doom and perdition, and to the wrath and judgment of God. You are inexcusable. The reasons and the excuses you give to commit sin, they are your condemnation. See, to keep sinning deliberately after we have received the knowledge of the truth is to tread on the foot the Son of God. And that means to insult and rebel against the Holy Spirit who brings God's grace to our hearts. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, There had no temptation taken you, but such as is common unto men. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Becky, the Lord has brought you into this prison to make a way of escape for you so that you might not finally be condemned with the world. The Lord has brought you here to chastise you, to rebuke and correct you. The lesson for us to learn here is that when God punishes because of sin, he does so severely so that we will realize our mistakes, so that we will realize our wrongdoings and return to him in repentance. This helps us to grow deeper in our relationship with him. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. And in verse 11 the Bible says, Now, no chastening for the present, seemeth to be joyous but grievous. Nevertheless, after what it yielded a peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Becky, the man who fell from your body has gone to eternity. It could be you who had died, but here you are. This is mercy. By now, the reality of hell would have dawned on him. Probably, my dear, he is looking for Abraham to send Lazarus to his family, but he will not find him. True repentance is no light matter. It is a thorough change of heart. We have come to this transit country called Greece, the last bus stop to eternity. In this grace we live and enjoy today. Has an expiry date as tag on every one. If we must run this race of lifelong test of faith till the end, the race must be run by throwing off the sins which doth so easily beset us. The race must be run with an awareness that our greatest danger is the temptation to give up and yield to sin. Becky, your proper response and prayer now should be drawn from the book of Job, chapter 34, verse 31 and 32. Surely it is meet to be said unto the Lord, I have borne chastisement, meaning to say I have accepted it. I will not fight chastisement. I will not reject chastisement. I will not complain or grumble on the chastisement. I have borne chastisement. I will offend no more. That which I see not, teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. That should be your proper prayer now. Oh, Becky, would you despise this chastening? Won't you whisper to yourself now and say, I yield. Won't you your knees before the Lord and receive healing into your soul? Cast down. We are meant to <laughs> Restoration can only be possible when we are broken. <laughs> God's word is still like a hammer today. Becky, tell the Lord to break and remove you.
So why is everybody? What of Margaret? Um, she went to Bible study. What of Glory? Uh, both of them went to the church. Oh, I see. Yeah, but um, they should be back any moment from now. Mm -hmm. Auntie, mm -hmm. we're almost coming together. Mm -hmm. I want to speak from the office. Margaret! What am I seeing? What happened to your life? My life? Nothing is wrong with me. I'm okay. Where are you coming from? We're coming from the Bible study. Bible study? In this lascivious dress? Lascivious? Auntie, you scared me. This is fashion and everyone looks sexy these days, you know. Sexy? Margaret, where is it in the Bible? Where is the holiness without which no man shall see the Lord? I have it, Auntie. How can my own clothes make me to backslide? Things like this don't matter anymore in the church. Even our pastor's wife wears things worse than this to preach. You people are mocking God. We are not mocking God. True worship is in the heart, Auntie. And not the garment. Please, let me go prepare something for you. Will you sit down there? Will you sit down, Margaret? I will not eat, nor drink. In this house until we settle this matter. What have you done to your family, Frank? Are you no longer with the Bible church where you converted me? No. I have left the church. Who has done this to you? Oh, the friend who invited you to a program. He only invited me to the program. I am the one who took the decision. You took a decision to drop your conviction? No, auntie. I did not drop my conviction. I only changed the place of worship. You did not drop your conviction. And your wife and daughter are dressing in these sinful attires. Yet you see nothing wrong with that. Okay, you did not drop your conviction. And you are bold to say that you have left the Bible-believing church where the totality of the word of God is taught. Before your eyes, your wife casts herself a stumbling to the children of light. And you are not bothered, Frank. Auntie. My wife is not a stumbling for anybody. I allow that dress for me because she keeps me from looking elsewhere. Besides, what you call sensual and immodest is a mere fashion that's in vogue. Just as she said, my pastor's wife wears things worse than you're complaining. The Bible says rent your heart and not the garment. Things like fashion do not matter anymore. We're in grace. Outward appearance is nothing. Where God is concerned and looks into is the heart with which you follow Jesus Christ, and not the clothes. So you have lost understanding of the scriptures. So you have truly fallen away, Frank. Then I must sit you down and teach you. I knew this would happen. But who would believe that you were the one that converted me? At a time in my intercession for you, I was asking the Lord if you have really died to the world. When you brought the so-called old friend home, and told me he invited you to a church program. My question to you was, is he a Christian? And you said yes. Then I said no. If he says he's a Christian, then he is a fruit of a compromised church. I said to you, don't go. But you told me you were no longer a babe in the things of the Lord, and you went with him. When you re returned from that program, you told me he gave you 200,000 naira for Christmas and invited you for a visit. When you insisted you would visit him, I warned you. I told you your eyes are now onto the plain of Sodom. When you returned from that journey, you came to me and told me he has got a job for you, that you have come to collect your family. Straight away, I said to you, if this is your decision, check the spirit that is leading you. That spirit is leading you to Sodom. Now here you are. But who would believe that the one who was once enlightened and have tested the heavenly gifts and we are made partakers with the Holy Ghost and have tested the good word of God and the powers of the world to come has removed his eyes from Jesus. Now he's looking onto his wife's sexuality to stand. Let me ask you, if your wife is dressing half naked to keep you from looking at other women, who then is she dressing for when she goes to the market? When she visits or when she travels in the same half nude. Oh, you said that what appearance is nothing. That where God is concerned and looks into is the heart. Fine, I'm not disputing that. But what did Jesus say concerning the heart? The Bible says in Mark chapter 7 verse 20. 
That which cometh out of the man. That defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of a man, proceeds evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murders, theft, covetousness, lasciviousness, deceit, an evil eye, blasphemy, wickedness, pride, foolishness. All these evil things proceed from the heart. And that defies the man. Jesus is saying that what defiles the man is his willingness to listen to wicked inclinations lodged into his heart by the devil, such as enumerated in verse 21, including the thoughts to dress half naked, immodest or sexy as your wife puts it. All this evil defies the man. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, holy and acceptable, and perfect will of God. Frank, believers are exalted in the scriptures to resist the temptation to yield or conform with the many worldliness surrounding the church, such as impurity and lust, filthy language, ungodly entertainment, fashionable clothes that are immodest and sexually seductive, immorality in general. Those who teach that believers may live immoral and unrighteous lives without jeopardizing their eternal salvation will themselves be accountable to God for the outcome. A leader's sin is a living sin. Christ knew that such leaders are in the church. In Matthew chapter 18, verses, Jesus emphasized it and warned, Whosoever shall offend one of this little one, who which believeth in me, it were better for him that a milestone were hanged about his neck, and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. This verse is saying, that whosoever spiritually destroys a child or a childlike believer will incur the greatest wrath of Christ. In verse 7, the Bible says, Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must need be that offenses come, but woe unto the man by whom the offense cometh. Jesus is warning that those who are instrumental in placing sinful things before others, especially before children, will receive the ultimate condemnation. False teachings and wicked examples is to join oneself with Satan, who is the great tempter, Margaret. It is the will of God that Christian women dress modestly and discreetly. Modesty involves dressing in such a way as to not attract undue attention to your body or to cross the boundaries of proper reserve. Modesty is the outward manifestation of inward purity. Dressing in such a way as to stimulate impure thoughts or desire in someone else is as wrong as the lust it provokes. No activity or circumstance justifies the wearing of immodest attires that will expose your body in such a way as to stimulate impure thoughts or desires in someone else. Husband, Frank, you are a watchman over your wife and over your daughter. The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 18, When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked ways. Save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquities. But his blood will I require at thy hand. Souls are crying, men are dying. Won't you win them to the cross? Go and find them, there to bring them. Win the lost at any cost. You should tell your sister to leave this house immediately because this house will not contain us. Tell her to leave? Why? What has she done? Are you asking me what she has done? See, this fire she came to ignite in this house, if you will not stop her, be assured to consume the peace in this house. Even the solemn marriage, but be ready. Be ready, Frank, to claim the responsibilities. Excuse me.
glory. Why are you crying? Is it because of what she was saying? Come on, cheer up. She was only talking to herself. See, if there's anything wrong in looking sexy, our church wouldn't have approved of it. And even our pastor's wife wouldn't be dressing the way she does. Come on, stand up and stop crying. Come on, come on. Join me in the kitchen. Come, come, come. I have some questions I want to ask you. Go on. Ask your questions. If dressing sexual and immodest is a sin, why does the church allow it at the altar of God? Looking at the weddings today in the church, are the brides not sexual and immodest in their wedding garment? Are they not even competing as who wears the sexiest wedding garment? Don't they bear it all and flaunt it before the Holy Spirit in the church of the living God? Are those garments not lascivious, as the Lord Jesus mentioned in the scripture? I want to know because I'm confused. Secondly, when I came here, I saw how the sisters were dressing, and I told them how I resisted the flesh and kept my faith. They all agreed with me that it is written in the scripture that a woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. But they challenged me to point to them in the scripture where the styles of men and women are described. What should be my answer to them now? Thirdly, I was brought up in a church where every message hinges on repentance, righteousness and holiness. The whole duty of the pastor was to point everyone to the cross. But when we came here, my dad found another place of worship where we never received the warnings and admonitions that kept us cautious of eternity. In the new church, everyone was allowed to dress as he or she wants. The boys sat down and the girls put on low waist that shows their nude. Even the mothers are brandishing their nakedness too. My question is, if I'm called to eternity tonight, will the Lord spare me? Will he exempt me from his judgment and hold my pastor responsible? Hence, he's the one that did not point me to the cross. Let me take your questions from the number one. Sexy or laxivious wedding garments. It is from sinful emulation and not all churches allow that. Sinful emulation is one of the strategies the devil is using to defile and corrupt believers today. Secondly, those ministers who came into the fold of Christ through the window have brought so much defilement to the body of Christ. The sensual and lascivious garments celebrated in churches today is copied from those apostate churches in the Western world. The Holy Spirit weeps at every such wedding. It is a sad commentary on the church that in the day of sexual permissiveness, the church, we should act and dress differently from the corrupt society, ignored the biblical standard for mother's dress and embrace the fashion fets of the world, even though they are sensually designed. Your number two question is Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. The woman should not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abominations unto the Lord thy God. Who are the abominable abominations unto God? They are those who profess Christ, but yet practice those evil as recorded in the scriptures, like Deuteronomy 22 verse 5, Mark chapter 7 verse 21 to 23, Revelation 21 verse 8, and all other sins as recorded in the scriptures. Search thy scripture, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. One of the greatest abominations in the sight of God is to profess faith in Jesus Christ and hope of eternal life, while at the same time living in disobedience to God and his words. The sisters agreed with you that it is written, but challenged you to show them where the different styles of garment for men and women are described. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1 verse 24, 
Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and have worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. You also want to know, but adventure you are called into eternity tonight. If God will exempt you from his judgment and hold your pastor responsible. Now listen to this story. A railway brakeman spent four months in a Sidelia hospital many years ago because a tarantula, wolf spider, had beaten him at the tip of the middle finger of the right hand. At a time, he felt a sharp ting of pain, but paid no further attention to it until the beating finger began to swell. Soon, the whole hand swelled three times above its natural size, bit by bit. Doctors began to amputate the affected fingers, yet the wound refused to heal. Finally, my dear, the whole hand had to go. It was only after 29 amputations that the surgeons were able to stop the spread of the poison. Even at that, they considered it nearly miraculous that he recovered at all because the poison had gone through to contaminate the entire system. Glory. This story tells us how God looks at disobedience to his commandments, even when they are ignorantly committed. Sin will be judged, whether it is committed deliberately or ignorantly. Those who continue in sin, even though they do not have a knowledge of the law of God, will perish because they have a measure of the knowledge of right and wrong. The Bible says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Glory. When you went to the market to buy your clothes, they were displayed on mannequins, the ones that will cover the body, and the ones that will expose sensitive parts of the body. All were perfectly displayed on mannequins. But you made your choice according to your lust. You chose the ones that will expose your nakedness. Today, when you are walking on the street, your one hand is behind you, pulling down your skin pit up to cover your nakedness. Why? Because you know you are naked. That is even your condemnation. Glory when you see a doctor. His garment spots him out. When you see a nurse on the street, her garment spots her out. When you see a lawyer or a mechanical engineer, their attires will identify them. What about a whore, a harlot or a prostitute? Her attire will identify her. What about the called out people, the believers? Their comments will spot them out as a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. They offer their bodies daily as a living sacrifice unto the Lord. They are few. Jesus said, they are in the world, but not of the world. Thank you, Auntie. I don't 
don't know the person the Lord may be singling out to warn about eternity today. Many careless souls have gone to eternity. The Bible then says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh that he standeth take heed lest he fall. We will use the next 30 minutes to pray, examining ourselves, to know actually if we are still in the race. I want us to rise to our feet and begin to pray. Examine yourself today. If you are still in the pain, let the Holy Spirit help you to examine yourself. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Examine yourself today. Are you still in the race? Pray, 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 pray. Open your mouth and pray. This pastor, this pastor is not following the late and temptable of this church. Since he was transferred to this church, he likes to preach long sermon. He doesn't even look at his watch. And even after a long sermon, he will still introduce another extra time. Another extra time for prayers. <laughs> Some of us have places to go now, even I too. I have somewhere very important to go. And I'm going. No, bro, John. Bro, John. Today is the day of our Lord and we should give it wholly to our God. Every other secondary thing should not interfere in our fellowship with our God. If the sermon is long as you said, it is well with our soul. Besides, the pastor is only taking his time to prepare us for eternity. Please, I want you to come back and pray in the message you just received. We just have 30 minutes to pray, please. No, brother George, no. I have to go. I have somewhere very important to go. I Seriously, I have to go. Souls are crying. Men are dying. Won't you win them to the ground? Hello? Hello, brother Sam. Has never brought the light? Yes, there is light. Okay, okay, what of the match? Has it started? Chelsea and Man U players are going into the beach right now. Okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. Mother, your husband has been rushed to a hospital and they said he's calling your name to see you. What happened to him? Benjo called to tell me. He said that his mistress brought him a deal. Bill put all his money in the deal, sold all he had and also put in the deal. When he realized it was a fraud and that his mistress masterminded it, he challenged the woman. Beating her up. And in the fight, the woman hit his head with a dangerous object and he collapsed. Benjo said that he's in the emergency unit of the hospital now. What about his mistress? She has fled. Bro George, please, can you come with me? Let me just get my bag so we can go there. Please, Bro George. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. His name is Bill. He's my husband. Are you Emelda, the man who was calling her? Yes, my name is Emelda. Doctor, please, this is the woman, the patient was calling her name and telling everybody that he wants to see her. He's dead. Oh, sister.
Mr. Imelda. Good evening, Pastor. Yeah, how are you? This is wonderful. Um, I just have to ask you, are you praying for the will of God in marriage? Yes, sir. This is one year my husband has died. I believe it is the will of God if I should marry. And I've been praying for the will of God in marriage. Since you've been praying, has the Lord led you in any way as to reveal the person he wants you to marry? Yes, at different times. While I was praying, the Lord revealed a man to me. Though he's not from any of the church regions in this state. This Neither have I met him before. But I kept on seeing him in my prayers. How would you describe the man? I've been seeing him as a pastor in a mission field. This is wonderful. Somebody has written, seeking your hand in marriage. And I'm thinking that the revelation you had could be true. Because uh, he is a mission pastor. But not actually from this state. Meanwhile, I would have to refer you to the marriage committee for further investigations. Thank you very much, Pastor. I'm very grateful. Pastor, in that case, I have to leave immediately. Yes, sure. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. The Lord came down in his almightiness. I couldn't believe the extent the Lord went to manifest his presence. Good oh, Pastor. hello, my sister. Yes. You're welcome, Thank my you sister. Pastor. Please sit down. Uh, we've been waiting for you. OK, Pastor. No need wasting uh, much time. Let us pray. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be alive today. We thank you for even the chance to gather here again. We pray, let your spirit, the spirit of truth, lead in this meeting so that at the end, your name only will be glorified. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, the Church Marriage Committee has uh, recommended that your courtship should continue in this place. So I would need to leave the two of you, in the presence of the Holy Spirit, as we get to know each other better. Do excuse me. Thank you so Thank much, you, sir. It's all right. Thank you, sir. It's OK. Sister Melda, of all I have told you, there was a spectacular miracle that God did in my life, which I would like to share with you. I was mad for 12 years. And for those 12 years, I was eating from the garbage, roamed the street and markets. I slept under bridges. And many people in my area knew me. But a day came, I fell in the timetable of God, and God brought up my case. I was walking on the street in the night, and I saw a large crowd. I thought it was a party. So I went there to pick and eat from the waste. But the unexpected happened. It was a crusade. And the man of God mentioned my case. Madness. And he prayed upon a man. A great force like a hurricane pushed me. And I fell on my knees. And I saw my insanity gone away from me. I stood up in my right mind and shouted a great hallelujah unto heaven that roused the crowd to joy. I was totally delivered. From that day, I gave my life to Jesus. Today, I'm in the mission field. This is God's awesome power of deliverance. I thank God because of your life. I thank him especially because you knew that he saved you for a purpose. My life also has the good, the bad, and the ugly before I met the Lord.
for this marriage you will not My come. Bible tells me you are a liar. You are a cheat and deceitful woman. You did not tell the man the whole truth. You did not tell him that you cannot be pregnant for him. You did not tell him that you have destroyed your womb and can never have a child for him. This is deceit. Who would believe that your secret is yet with us? The day you repented and turned away from us was the day a cup was prepared for you. A cup too hot for you to drink. And I will be following you with this cup, knowing that we shall surely meet you at this juncture. God gave you the man. But who will take him from you? Who will tell the whole world that your secret is with us? But if you will again agree with me, I will allow the secret to go with you. Devil, what is good in your favor? To agree with you to continue to keep in my heart what I had shared with you in the past is like going to hellfire from the church. How can I, who have tested the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, turn back to my own vomit? I have told the man all I have remembered. It is a mistake on my part if I forgot to tell him that I cannot be pregnant for him. Maybe because I was overwhelmed with the joy of getting married to the man after my heart. But thank you for reminding me. I will surely let him know. The cup is too hot. You cannot drink it. The consequence is too much for you to bear. We will expose you. We will disgrace you. We will rubbish you and publish you in all tablets of the whole world. Those who call you holy shall turn and mock you. And finally, this marriage will be gone and you will never marry again till eternity. You are a liar. Even if God allows you, I have nothing to lose. Jesus is coming very soon and I will be comforted. Ha. It is easier said than done, I challenge you. There will never be a contest. Because I did it. It is my cross to carry and I have the grace to bear it. Get a basin for your tears. We have prepared this cup for you. At the hour, my Lord Jesus drank his cup. I will drink mine at the appointed time. We are waiting for you. Excuse me, sir. Th thank you so much, sir. We had a wonderful meeting. But I may not be coming back, sir. I need to go and pray more. What happened? In fact, uh, hold on, let me come downstairs. What happened? Sir, I think I should go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you so much, sir. Sister Imelda. What is it? No, I, I told him the truth, but he couldn't bear it. It's well, eh? You know what? Just take it easy. Control yourself. The Lord is in control. Hmm? She told me it was her late husband that insisted on the abortion that destroyed her womb. You know they were into drugs. And the husband saw the pregnancy as a delay and threat to their business. Pastor Dafel, my candid advice to you is to leave that sister and continue to pray for the will of God in marriage. God has revealed all these things to you and God is not an author of confusion. Will his servant ask him for bread and he gives him stone? Will his servant ask him for fish and he gives him scorpion? What is the essence and purpose of marriage if she cannot bear you a child? Pastor Raphael, it is now time for you to walk out of that courtship. You must not make any mistake in marriage. Pastor Raphael, she has told you the truth. She won't give you a child in the marriage. She has said, now everything is left for you to decide. You are the one that God gave the revelation. You are the one that knows what you want in marriage. And if you are in doubt, you should go back to the Lord in prayer. Seek his face and he will reveal his will to you. When you pray through, come back and let me know your decision. Thank you, Pastor.
Let us pray. Oh God, as you have brought Imelda and Raphael together in love and trust, enable them through the power of your Holy Spirit to make and keep their vows through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, Pastor Raphael, will you take Imelda to be your lawful wedded wife? to live according to the law of God in the holy estate of marriage? Will you love, honor and keep her, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her so long as you both shall live? I will. Sister Imelda, will you take Pastor Raphael to be your lawful wedded husband, to live according to the law of God in the holy state of marriage, will you love, honor and keep him, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him, for as long as both of you shall live? I will. Now, Pastor Raphael, you have to repeat this declaration after me. I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I take you, Imelda. To witness that I take you, Imelda. To be my lawful wedded wife. To be my lawful wedded wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To have and to cherish. To have and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. And to this I pledge myself. And to this I pledge myself. Sister Imelda, repeat this declaration after me. I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I take you, Pastor Raphael. To witness that I take you, Pastor Raphael. To be my lawful wedded husband. To be my lawful wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in to have and to cherish. To have and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. And to this I pledge myself. And to this I pledge myself. Link these two hands together. Now face the congregation. Ladies and gentlemen. Before you and the holy presence of God, I declare Pastor Raphael and our sister Imelda as husband and wife. <laughs> Hello, my sister Imelda. Good evening, Pastor. How are you? Thank you, sir. I'm fine. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Please sit down. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. How is the family? Pastor, we're doing very well. We thank God. Pastor, I actually came to tell you that we shall be leaving for Guduguduga. Oh, Guduguduga? 
Yes, Pastor. That is where my husband has been sent as a mission pastor. That city is the seat of Satan. But I know that for the Lord to choose to send you people there, he must have great plans for the dwellers in that city. And it must be for your lifting. Amen. It is true, sir. The Lord who is sending us to Gudugudugah is able to save our lives Amen. and bring the gospel light to the lost souls of the city. Go in this your might. Amen. Let us pray. In the name of Jesus. You said you will even send us as sheep in the midst of wolves. And there's nowhere the feet of your people shall tread on that you will not give unto us as a possession. We are fighting for our God. 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 Everybody in this bus, come down. Yes. I said everybody should come down. Yes. Come down. Yes. We are fighting for our gods. Yes. The gods of this land. Yes. It is not everybody that we are looking for. We are looking for those that preach Jesus Christ. They have turned their people away from our idols. These are the people we are looking for. Yes. If you are not a preacher of that Jesus Christ, if that is boss and go your way, we are not for you. Spirit of Jesus Christ, if you are not a coward, show me who's moving into a good good guy. With you. I am here. Do not blaspheme the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, Verily I say unto you, All sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies. Wherewith soever they shall blaspheme, but he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost had neither forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. The Lord Jesus has sent me. And I am here with the package you are looking for. Yes, the package. But allow me to open it for you. Yes, yes, the package. Package. Yes, the package. Doa, 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 doa. Let us speak. People of Okudukuduka, Jesus, propelled by deep love for you, came to this world and died for your sins. He shed his blood to atone for your sins and for the whole world. Would you make the same mistake the Jews have made? The Jews rejected him. But they realized they have crucified the Christ and Savior. Take a lesson from the kindreds of the high priest at Jerusalem. The Bible says, But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, that they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For indeed a notable miracle had been done by them is manifest unto all those that dwell in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it. People of Okudukuduka, be wise. Take a lesson from Joash. The Bible says, Then the men of the city said unto Joash, Bring out thy son that he may die, because he has cast on the altar of Baal, because he has cut on the groups that was by it. And Joash said unto all them that stood against him, Will you plead for Baal? Will you serve him? He that will plead for him, let him be put to death, which it is yet morning. For if he be a god, let him plead for himself, because one has cast down his altar. People of Agudugudiga, will you plead for the gods? Will you serve them? This is what you ought to say like Josh. If the gods be a god, let them fight for themselves. People of Okutukutuka, what did Gamali say to the council of Israel? And he said unto them, Now I say unto you, refrain from these men, let them alone. For if this council or this work be of man, it shall come to naught. 
but if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. Let's happily ye be found even to fight against God. Let's happily ye be found even to fight against God. Pharaoh said, Who is that God that will deliver you from me with signs and wonders? God proved himself, but Pharaoh hardened his heart and pursued after the chosen people of God, his armies, horses and chariots were drowned at the Red Sea. People of Ogudugudugah, since you were born, seeing the men and women God is using in the power of the Holy Ghost to preach salvation. God using them to preach repentance from sin and he using them by the power of the Holy Ghost to heal the sick. Have you seen any with knives, sticks or guns saying, come to Jesus or I kill you. If the gods be a god, let them fight for themselves. This is what you ought to say and save yourselves and save your souls. People of Ogudugudugah, you come unto me with nice sticks and gods like unto a thief. I am not here on my own. The Lord Jesus has sent me. If I have come to the last mile of my journey, then my Lord is here. He is waiting for me. But where, where will you spend your eternity when you come to the last mile of your journey? Escape from this impending doom of hell and save your souls. Jesus said, Whosoever cometh to me, I shall in no wise cast him away. Beloved, will you spend Jesus' invitation to salvation? What you say now? Come to Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, I am sorry, and you will be saved. Many have rejected this great call of salvation. They have mocked God to his face. John Lennon, a singer many years ago, during an interview with an American magazine, he said, Christianity will end. It will disappear. I do not have to argue about that. I am certain Jesus was okay, but his disciples were too simple. Today, we are more famous than him. Lennon, after saying that the Beatles were more famous than Jesus Christ, was Short six times. Take credit on us, president of Brazil. He said during his presidential campaign, if he would get 500,000 votes from his party, not even God can remove him from presidency. Sure, he got the votes, but he got sick before his inauguration and died. Casusa, by a central Brazilian composer, singer, and poet, breathed a show in Canasio while smoking his cigarettes. He popped some smokes into the air and said, God, that is for you. He died at the age of 32 of lung cancer. What about the man who built the Titanic after the construction of the cruise ship? A reporter asked him how safe the Titanic would be. With an ironic tone, he said, Not even God can sink it. The result, I think you all know what happened to the Titanic. Marilyn Monroe, an actress, was visited by Billy Graham during a presentation of a show. The man said, The Lord Jesus has led me to preach to you. After listening to what the preacher had to say, she said, I don't need your Jesus. A week later, she was found dead in her apartment. Bon Scott, singer, the ex vocalist of the Eddie Stroke Disease, in one of his albums of 1979, he sang, Don't stop me, I am going on the way, down the highway to hell. On the 10th of February, 1980, Bon Scott was found dead. He has been choked by his own vomit. In 2005, in Capella's Brazil, a group of friends, drunk, went to pick up a friend. Her mother, being worried with the drunkenness of her friends, said to her daughter, holding her by hand, who was already seated in the car, she said, My daughter, God go with you. May he protect you. And in response, she said, If only he God travels in the trunk, because inside here is already full. Hours Later, news came that they had been involved in a fatal accident. Everyone had died. The car could not be recognized what type of a car it had been. But surprisingly, the trunk was intact. Inside the trunk was a crate of egg, and none was broken. 
Christian Hewitt, Jamaican journalist and entertainer said, the Bible, the word of God, was the worst book ever written. In June 2006, she was found burnt beyond recognition in her motor vehicle. All these people have mocked God to his face. They have rejected the great call of salvation and despised the grace of salvation in Christ Jesus. The Bible said, Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, but blasphemies, where which so ever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost had never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. I don't know. I don't know who is willing to come to Jesus. Drop your weapons. I want to pray with you. Raise up your hands. Raise up your hands. I want to pray with you. Father Lord, I thank you for all those who are raising up their hands in surrender to Jesus Christ. I thank you for all those who are raising up their hands in their hearts. I thank you, Father, for all those who will raise up their hands after now. Father, I pray that all those whom thou hast set free in this crusade, Father, I pray that they will be in the name of Jesus Christ. here to share the testimony of my wife. I have not come to mourn her, but I'm mourning the day I felt the test of a true disciple. The day the Eden we are rather saying, who is the true disciple of the Lord Jesus among us? I saw the sword and I trembled. I denied my Lord Jesus Christ and saved my life. But my wife did not. She stood by the Lord Jesus and laid down her life for him. I am mourning today, but not for my wife. But I mourn the evil day I dropped the cross and denied the Lord Jesus. For my wife, I rejoice because I know she has come to be with the Lord. But please pray for me. Pray that the Lord will restore me and rewrite my name in the book of life. <laughs> Before I testify what the Lord has done in my life, I would like some of our brethren who came here to come out because they have testimonies to share. I was once leading their lives, but now Jesus is leading our lives. The sister that is lying in this casket is a true soldier of the cross. She fought and died at her duty post. She did not fight to save her life. She thought that I and these brethren might be free. What else shall I then say than that you all will pray for us, that none of us here will lose this new life she handed over to us before she slept.
Sinking in 